The following program paid for by Rosenberg Financial Group. Providing live finance advice since 1993. It's time for your money with Sherry Goss and Randy Goss. To participate in today's program, call 478-742-0940 with your financial questions and comments. And now, live from the making studios of News Talk 940 WMAC, it's your money. Good morning, Middle Georgia, and welcome to Your Money. We are Randy and Sherry Goss for the Rosenberg Financial Group. And as financial advisors, the main thing that we do is provide retirement planning and advice and manage our clients' investment accounts. And if you're looking for a financial advisor, please contact our office to set up a complimentary consultation. And if you're interested in or need of any insurance products, such as long-term care and stuff like that, we can handle that for you, too. So just give us a call. Our office number is 478 472-8100, Nine two two eight one zero zero, and we have offices in Macon and Warner Robins for your convenience. And to find out more about us, visit our website, retirerelax.com, where you can read a number of special reports and listen to past radio show broadcasts. And you can sign up to receive our digital feeds, which provide a great information on various subjects in short video format. So uh, we also offer free seminars to the public. So if you're a member of a church or a civic organization and you're looking for a guest speaker, please call us. Uh, these are tailored to whatever your needs are. They're not a sales pitch for, for Rosenberg Financial Group. So Sherry loves getting out in the community, and we are getting more requests, and the calendars are filling. So, yay. So, yay. so uh, please just give us a call at 478-922-8100. And if you'd like to call into today's radio show, 478 478- Seven four two zero nine forty, and please, you know, keep the emails coming for ideas for you know topics you'd like for us to touch on on future radio shows. And you can email me with those suggestions and ideas at randy at rfmoney dot com. And a comment about the long term care. So, we got contracted with a new company last year that is approaching it in a different way. They don't write on anybody that is over seventy. And to figure out if you can qualify to purchase it, uh, you, there is a list of conditions and medications. And if you can read that list and you don't have those medications and you don't have those conditions, you basically qualify for the policy. So you go in understanding that you're going to get covered more likely, uh, unless some other crazy thing pops up. Uh, and then they verify through different websites that they uh, feed through to make sure that you're telling the truth. Uh, so, and then the other thing is, it's either a one, uh, you can pay it off with a one-time check, or you can pay it off over a five-year period. But the benefits are very good, and but it's it's the most transparent coverage that I've ever seen. And the fact that they don't cover people over 70 limits the risk that they're taking on uh, with the number of people that are signing up for the policy. So. I feel like it's a healthy, good company. It's very straightforward. So if you're interested in that, email me, Sherry, S-H-E-R-R-I, at rfmoney.com, and I can forward that uh, document to you so you can look and see if you would be eligible for it. And then I could get you a quote by, all by email. By the way, good morning, Sherry. How are you feeling over there? I'm I'm really relaxed. I'm ready for a nap. I know you are. <laughs> you look like it. <laughs> I got up at 4. 4. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. The cat alarm again, right? Uh, no, I don't know. I have no idea. I got up and started reading because I was awake. So, anyways. So, market update. S&P 500 up just a hair this week. No wonder. Got a lot going on in the news. Federal Reserve Chair Jay Powell said Friday, future decisions on interest rate moves will be made on a meeting-by-meeting meeting basis after an aggressive campaign that has pushed rates to the highest level in 16 years. Powell also said interest rates may not need to rise as high as previously suspected with the bank crisis tightening credit conditions, even with inflation well above the Fed's 2% target. He says, we come a long way in policy tightening and the stance of policy is restrictive, Powell said at a conference alongside former Fed chair Ben Bernanke. They finally are talking to the guy that's the smart person in the room that we talked about, what, a month ago? It was oh, on actually, the front page you, of the Wall Street Journal. Yeah, well, actually, it's been about three months ago. You've been talking about where's Bernanke for Where? a long time. Why aren't they bringing him into the fold on this deal? The guy was successful coming out of 08 and 09. Mm-hmm. He knew exactly what to do, and he was this calm voice that didn't cause volatility. And in the article that was in the Wall Street Journal front page a few months ago, he was getting the Nobel Economic Prize for how well he he handled the Fed back 
in 08 and 09. And so I kept saying, surely they will listen to him. Well, they actually invited him to show up on stage. Well, you know, t- too, you know, he got a lot of criticism back then. I remember going through my master's in finance mm. during that time, and people were poking him with a stick, too. So everything looked But the better. other Fed people weren't poking him with a stick. They were all, it was the same. Really? So, yeah. I just and, don't and, remember it. Yeah, but the thing is, what I'm trying to get to is, is everything looks a little better in the rearview mirror. So you, they're not going to walk up during the middle of the crisis and give him the Nobel Peace Prize. Going, You're doing a great job right now. Here you go. You know, they're going to wait and see how things shake out. And then they're going to give some guy a prize if he deserves it. But he already got it. He just got it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, Jerry. Oh, I got you. <laughs> a, vote on the, uh, the, a vote on the debt deal is close. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy said he believes a deal on the federal debt limit may be agreed upon soon, even as early as next week. Please, please. This is the right. most positive the Republican leader has been since negotiations started, and it gives hope that a potential debt default will be averted. We cannot have a debt default. And why don't they just work through the weekend? This is getting down to a uh, to, to the to the crunch time, you know. Just well, Biden has flat out said he doesn't agree with anything they want, and so he just shut him down. So they went home. Well, right? it's, it's just stupid. He, is he willing to to drive the country into a a catastrophic situation? I I don't think he knows what's going on. Yeah. Uh, Japan welcomes global chip makers. The economic battlefield between the West and China continues to accelerate. In a meeting with Japanese Prime Minister Kishida, several of the world's largest chip makers, including Taiwan Semiconductor, Samsung, Intel, and Micron, shared plans to massively expand into Japan. The initiative is part of a major push from the U.S. and its allies to move manufacturing of semiconductor chips outside of China as geopolitical tensions worsen in the region. Right. Well... Not a bad thing. All right. Joe Biden's global vision is too timid and pessimistic, they say. In the 1940s and the early 1950s, America built a new world order out of the chaos of war. Um, And for all the shortcomings, it kept pace between the superpowers and underpinned decades of growth that lifted both billions out of poverty. Today, that order, based on global rule, free markets, and American promise to uphold both, is beginning to fray. Toxic political partisanship at home has eroded confidence in America's governments. The financial crisis of 2007 through 2009 dented faith in the markets. Americans' failures in Iraq and Afghanistan undermined its claims to spread democracy. Today, most countries refuse to heed the call to enforce sanctions on Russia, and China's rise has spurred American politicians to take more selfish, zero-sum approach to geopolitics. China's rise has also increased the threat of war. In a conversation with economist Henry Kissinger, who will be 100 this month, warns that China and America are on a path to confrontation. And he believes that both sides have convinced themselves that the other represents a strategic danger. The stakes could not be higher. Both are nuclear armed and both are also dabbling with unpredictable artificial intelligence. Kissinger worries that just before the First World War, the the superpowers will stumble stumble into a catastrophe. So this is from The Economist. So they're looking at it from a global perspective. Mm -hmm. So it says, start with the economy. Despite what many believe, America's economic power is not declining. With 4% of the world's people, it generates 25% of global output, a share unchanged since 1980. No other big country is as prosperous or innovative. As we noted last week, the size of China China's economy is unlikely ever to surpass America's by much. The main source of America's strength is creative destruction and open markets in a rules-based global economy. So although Mr. Biden is right to reinforce the social safety net, his state-led insular economic vision may ultimately erode living standards and American clout. And the story goes on uh, to critique how Biden is handling China and Ukraine and finishes with this statement. Unfortunately, the Biden doctrine fails to rebut the narratives of, of American decline, and he has not resolved the tension between the country's toxic political uh, politics and its role as a link pan of a liberal order. Unless America looks out at the world with self-confidence, it will lead to struggle. So I think he's correct. So home sales dropped 23% on year. Prices slip. So sales of previously owned homes 
fell in April for the prior, from the prior month, and prices declined from a year earlier by the most in more than 11 years. Existing home sales have declined for 14 out of the past 15 months and are down roughly one-third since the start of 2022. Mortgage rates have fluctuated in recent months since hitting 20-year highs above 7%. The average rate for a 30-year fixed mortgage right now, 6.35% last week, according to Freddie Mac. But in most or many markets, a shortage of inventory is limiting home purchases. Homeowners who bought homes in recent years or refinanced to lock in low mortgage rates are reluctant to move, real estate agents say. This is happening in Warner Robins. I received a chamber notification last week that Warner Robins has the third fastest growing increase in home prices in the entire country. I, I saw that, and that's just staggering. And those numbers were year-over-year year increases. But who would have guessed Warner Robins? Jeez. Um, other areas around Middle Georgia have experienced significant increase in sales prices, too, just not to that level. And I was speaking with the president of Magnolia State Bank this past week, and he was highlighting how many homes have been purchased in cash, just with cash in the hmm. past year. And, and it's primarily has been because people are leaving the larger states in the north and moving you know, from the cities up there and selling their properties for a very large sum of money and moving down here and being able to pay cash and not just pay cash, but overbidding everybody else who has contracts on place. So it's, it's very interesting how, how that's shifting everything down here. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's, I guess it's, we were talking a little bit last week. Depends on which side of the, the fence you're on, whether you you're a buyer it, or seller. That's right. It depends on whether you think it's a good thing or not. But anyway, um, did you know that one of the largest ports in the country sits right here in Georgia, and it's just right down the road in Savannah? I know we've talked about it in the past, but this is just an awesome facility, and we just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of an update on it. The port maintains massive cranes that load and unload thousands of containers from ships every day. These containers are stored until they're ready for customer pickup or are loaded onto ships destined to one of the many global ports. Although the, port, uh, the Savannah port is one of the largest in the country, it is still expanding. Currently, the wharf is being pulled back from the river to allow for a new berth to be constructed for larger ships to come in. They have purchased an additional eight ship to shore cranes and just waiting for the project to reach the point to install them. Those new cranes uh, and some work on the river will allow bigger ships to come in and more of them to line up to, to the dock to be serviced. These new cranes will allow a 25 percent increase in the productivity. Wow. Upgrades will make it close to 4 million boxes. It will cost more than a billion bucks. The port is its own entity, so it does not get tax dollars. And that surprised me when I had read that. And the Savannah does not have the, – the Savannah port has a lot of status in the, in the container ship world. Savannah is the fourth largest in the United States and sits in the top 40 in the world, according to the Shipping Council. The yard also has a mega rail, the largest on-port rail in North America. 18 to 20 percent of boxes will roll down the tracks. Which ultimately results in more trucks being taken off the roadways. And I know Highway 96 thanks them for that. Speaking of trucks, if an 18-wheeler picks up a container, they're in the port for about a half an hour before they're loaded or unloaded and out back out the gate, which is just phenomenal. Uh, if they're, Let's see, uh, 35 ships come in in a week and dock for 12 to 18 hours everything is precise pattern from start to finish it's just like a a choreographed event for every in, in ship that comes in every truck it's all run with technology yes i just like to watch that it's so from efficient a, from a video camera in the sky mm-hmm. visit the website if this is interesting to you because it's fascinating to me i have clients who have had a tour and say it is really amazing to watch the Port of Savannah, according to the website, is the single largest and fastest growing container terminal in America, which is great for our local economy uh, because all of this stuff has to travel. I mean, we're making money off the port because it's in Georgia, and we're making money off the trucks that are having to go down there and pick up all of this stuff. But see, I think this ties directly into why Warner Robins and probably Perry is picking up huge home because price distribution increases centers. because distribution centers uh, were centralized to a lot of stuff coming out of the port headed to Atlanta. It was just a good hub. And there's more to come. That's right. So go to gaports.com. That's gaports.com to learn more. It is really a cool website, and it's very fun to look at. So Georgia buys 1,100-acre mega site for development in Peach County. And these stories came out of Channel 13. 
Uh, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp announced the purchase of an economic development site in central Georgia. A partnership between the state of Georgia and the Development Authority of Peach County will bring a mega site of more than 1,100 acres off Highway 96 in Peach County. It is very encouraging to see a new, fully prepared mega site that will create more high-quality jobs for hardworking Georgians in rural parts of the state. Kemp said in a press release, Georgia's superior infrastructure, including a robust highway system, rail lines, record-setting port, and top-ranked airport, continues to make doing business in the Peach State a competitive choice for companies around the world. I am thankful to Peach County for their partnership in this investment. In the release, Martin Mosley, chairman of the Peach County Board of Commissioners, said they've been preparing for an opportunity like this, for one, like this one for a long time. The Middle Georgia megasite will put the entire Middle Georgia region on the map and position us for significant investment in new jobs. An announcement like this is transformative for a rural community, and we are so excited to be part of something of this significance. Um, this joint effort will create opportunities for the entire region, and the projects attracted to megasites create a ripple effect of growth that crosses county lines. So 96 uh, in what's south of Warner Robins, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's insane. Already is so busy, and it looks like there's construction going all the way to 75, so I guess this picks up on the other end of 75 all the way into Peach County is what yeah, it sounds like. Yeah, sounds like. Yeah, that's good. the road's going to be kind of busy. It's pretty cool. Anyway. Uh, let's jump back to the debt ceiling for a second. The White House and the House Republicans negotiators trying to resolve an impasse over the rising debt ceiling broke off talks Friday morning with no immediate plans to resume discussions. Top negotiators to the Speaker of the House, McCarthy, said that the latest conversation had yielded no progress. Republicans want to raise a national or the nation's $31.4 trillion borrowing limit in exchange for deep cuts in government spending. President Biden said Wednesday that he wouldn't accept welfare program requirements that would uh, affect people's medical health needs as part of the debt ceiling negotiation. Negotiators are... Fa- i got to go back to that one. I know. Biden is against welfare program work requirements. This is something Trump did not institute. He left it up to the well, states, and the states who did institute it, their unemployment rates dropped like a rock well, because people went back to work. What they were saying that would affect their medical health needs, but they're also hold up or held up on the fact that he doesn't want to have work um, qualifications that, you know, if you're on, un, un, on unemployment. Or Medicaid. That you can't, you have you don't have to sh- uh, show that you work uh, but three days or, or apply for three jobs in a week. So I don't know if I told you this, but I had a client in this week that's on unemployment. She got laid off, and she's never been on unemployment in her life. She's 72, and she's been working since she was 16. And a friend said, why don't you apply for unemployment? And she goes, what? I've never done that, and so she did, and she only has to apply for three jobs That's a week. That's what I'm saying. They don't want to even budge. Three on, jobs a week? They don't want to even. And you're sitting at home? They don't want to budge on any of this. What is wrong with that picture? It, I think the government just wants everyone to be very uh, dependent. dependent on them. Yeah. Anyway, negotiators are facing a very short deadline. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen reiterated in an updated forecast money that the U.S. could become unable to pay its bills on time. Uh, as early as June 1st, unless Congress acts. Negotiations have fa- uh, focused on capping spending, revoking unused COVID-19 aid, streamlining permitting uh, for energy projects, and changing work requirements for some benefit programs. At the same time, progressive lawmakers on the far left of the Democratic Party are pushing Biden to use the 14th Amendment uh, to the Constitution to raise the debt ceiling without Congress as a way to avoid negotiating with Republicans. Progressives have allowed the loudly oppose strengthening strengthening work requirements, as we previously uh, spoke about, for programs that help poor Americans. Uh, the 14th Amendment states that the federal debt authorized by law shall not be questioned. Uh, Biden has said that he's considering invoking the amendment as a way to keep uh, paying the nation's bills if Congress didn't raise the debt limit. But he added that the issue uh, would be subject to uh, litigation and might not be a solution in the current standoff. And the administrative Administration officials have played down the possibility. So, so I don't think I wrote this next thing. Well, I, I, you know, what we're talking about, I, I got to go back to the 14th Amendment. You know, I don't see how they're going to use that, but I'm not a lawyer. And because it was originally passed uh, as it was put in, into effect in 16 or 1868, 
and it granted citizenship for all persons born naturalized in the United States, including formerly enslaved people. So I don't know how they're going to get that, but I'm not an attorney, and I don't know all the other little right. things that have changed in it over the years. So it's just interesting to me how they can take certain constitutional uh, you know, amendments and, and, use them for and, whatever. and warp them to something yeah, like this. I don't know. So I had a couple of client stories from this week. So I, cli- I saw a client this week who has a son that just moved here, and he's interested in becoming a truck driver. So I told him about Central Georgia Tech, and then I went to lunch right after I saw him and had a cup of soup, and my server wants to be a nurse, but she can't afford the tuition. So I told both of them about Central Georgia Tech. So there are 18, now 18, high-demand career fields that you can study absolutely free through the technical system of Georgia. Automotive technology, aviation technology, certified engineer, commercial truck driving, computer programming, computer technology, construction technology, diesel equipment technology, uh, early childhood care and education, electrical linemen, health science, industrial maintenance, logistics, movie production, practical nursing, precision manufacturing, welding and joining, and law enforcement and criminal justice. Go to tcsg.edu. These are the high-demand career fields, and they are free. And nobody knows about this. I don't know why they don't have billboards all over the place advertising this stuff, because it's the best deal ever, and it's only in the state. This is for the people in the state of Georgia, and it's through the entire technical school system throughout the entire state. And so... Kids can actually go to these programs. If they do dual enrollment, they can go to them junior and senior year in high school and graduate from high school and go get a job. This is what we need to be pushing and, instead of everybody going to college and going into debt. And, and, or, yeah, I mean, give these things a, a go first um, because they're free, first of all. And I'm looking through these, and some of these pay really well. Yep. I mean, there, there's... Truck drivers are making hundred grand a year. Well, diesel construction or diesel uh, technology... Computer programming. I mean, there, there's some really good courses in here. So anyway, yeah. So the, the uh, website is tcsg.edu, and it's called the High Demand Career Field. And Governor Deal is who started this. He did two years of research to figure out what companies needed them to teach people so they could get hired. And they keep adding and building on this program, and it's just phenomenal. And I just can't stand it when people don't know about it. So spread it around, please, at your church, your club, wherever you go to let people know so they can advise their grandchildren and their kids to go look at this. Uh, we, had, we were out to dinner one night at a Barefoot Tavern, remember, years ago? And our server was just depressed looking. Oh, yeah. And I said, what's going on with you, man? And he said, I can't work enough shifts to ever be a husband and a father. And I'm dating a lady that has two kids, and I love her. But how am I going to provide for them working all these shifts as a server and never being home at night? I said, holy cow, you, have you ever heard of the High Demand Career Initiative? No. I said, go to Central Georgia Tech, call the career counselor, make an appointment, go see them. So we were walking downtown about a month later. Yeah, you were coming back from the radio show. Yeah, and there he, he came out of the restaurant and hugged me. I said, what's going on? He said, I'm going to go to truck driving school. It's going to be free, and there's already a company that's going to hire me, and I could be making a hundred grand in a year. I said, I know. That's what I'm talking about. Why does nobody know about this? And he he's gone. He's yeah. gone. He's not there anymore. He he's lifted off. He's lifted off, and he's Watched. on his way, and probably married with two stepkids. But you know, of all the people that we've discussed career paths and you know trying to you know give them advice, going to the right place, you know, get, getting off out of the nest, you know, um, probably 10% have taken it. I've listened. Yeah. Well, the lady, the server was uh, at La Prairie where I had my chicken soup. She, I'd never seen her there before, and she just, and they weren't busy. And so we got to chat quite a bit. And once I told her about this, and I, I let her text this from my phone to her phone so she could go home and look at it with her husband, mm-hmm. she said, my husband would like to be a truck driver, but we, we don't know where to go. Here you go. I couldn't believe it. I had three people in two hours that wanted this. So please spread Did you mention the young lady we met this last Saturday? Had the uh, exact same question, and you turned her on to, to this, this program? What, who anyway, is that? Anyway, we, we were at Wild Wings uh, yesterday. 
anyway, with the waitress at uh, at Wild Wings. Uh, we mentioned this to her. She had her own career path. She was trying to get on her. Her husband was trying to become a truck driver and pay, figure out how to pay. To I go forgot school. all about that. Yeah, and then we said, well, hey, well, have you thought about this? And so she, she that's got right. It, she got it off your phone, and so hopefully um, that'll set them on the right. We path. try to spread this everywhere we go. That's why when we go out to eat, we like to ask people. So, what is it you want to be? And then they'll tell us. And, and a lot of times they're in college. Um, a lot of times they're doing fine, but a lot of times they're flailing around, and that's why they're a server. Mm-hmm. And um, anyways, I, I spread it around, tcsg.edu, high-demand career field. Tell it to your pastor. Maybe he needs to announce it in the in the um, high school program, whatever, and spread it around. Let kids know about this stuff because yep. nobody – I don't understand why nobody knows about it. Anyways. All right. Before we go on, you've been listening to Your Money with Randy and Sherry Goss, and we are with Rosenberg Financial Group. And if you'd like to call in today to contribute to the show, the number is 478-742-0940. And Rosenberg Financial Group has offices in Macon and Warner Robins, and you can learn more about us by visiting our website, retirerelax.com. We do offer complimentary consultations, and setting up an appointment is really easy. Just call our office at 478-922-8100. And we offer seminars to the community at no cost. So call us and uh, we can uh, discuss what you'd like for us to talk about. And we'd be happy to be there for you. Anyway. So I want you to tell the story about that other server, the guy that wanted to be a pilot. Oh. That was just a really fun interaction. That was. Um, This has been several years ago. But uh, we were sitting at uh, La La Perea. And we got to talking to this guy and said, hey, so what are your what are your life goals? And he said that he would like to be a pilot. We'll pick that up in a second. Good morning. You're on with Randy and Sherry. How are you today? Hey, good morning. This is your favorite listener from Perry, Georgia. Good morning, Robin. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. I will listen to what you're saying. And that is at the Central Georgia Tech, a uh, very good program as far as they're trying to get people to sign up as for us enrolling and these jobs um, at a very, like I said, a low cost because, like I said, you don't have to pay anything, so that's good. But now I want to throw in a, well, not so much an advertisement, but for Fort Valley State University because they're going to start up with a nursing program starting and this coming fall. It will be the first time, and for okay. those, especially those senior citizens, uh, over 62, I guess is what they consider a senior citizen. They can go for free. And of course, like I said, you can't be free. So, uh, for <laughs> Valley State University, yes. And, uh, and just, I uh, changed the subject just a little bit as far as with the, uh, debt ceiling. And as you all know, that the, well, the Republicans are not saying it's political, but they are holding up and saying that, uh, Something got to be cut as far as with the budget, which is right. true. But that, like I said, and then they asked them what they do, do they want to cut, and they well, none of the Republican partners can want to per se say uh, things like Social Security or food stamps or anything like that. And of course, Joe Biden said he would veto it if in the event that they would try to cut those programs. But like I said, the debt ceiling is already debt that we have already occurred. And one thing about it, as far as we mentioned about China, and I may have mentioned this once before, as far as we owe China over $3 trillion. And what happened is that they really don't want us to pay that $3 trillion off China because what is happening is that we're paying them interest. And that's where how come the debt ceiling goes so high is that we borrow money and we only pay the interest. And the longer we pay in the interest, then, like I said, this is enough to support uh, China military. Just by the interest alone on that $3 trillion, we are supporting China military. So these com- these countries that get us into debt, they don't really don't want us to pay them off. The only thing they want us to do is almost like a credit card as far well as uh, you go and get credit from a company and they just say, oh, just pay $5 a week. But well, do, you have the, do you have the numbers uh, uh, to support our debt paying their military? Because they have a very big military. Well, it's as... I mean, I just don't... Can, can you send that to me? I'd like to see it, honestly. I really would like to see it. 
So, All right, I'll, I'll try to get it up there too. I mean, I'd, I'd love to, because that, that's fascinating to me. I'd love, cause well, I, then we just throw money around like drunken we, sailors we for years now, ever since Bill Clinton was in office, and they've all done it. All Every president since Bill Clinton has driven us into a ditch, and the ditch is not sustainable. We've got to get serious about this. And, you know, it, it's uh, the debt ceiling. I understand the, the conversation that's being held. I understand that we need to pay the debt that we've already incurred. But the problem is, if we keep letting uh, our current president have unfettered access to a checkbook, he is just going to keep running up this deficit. He has no reservation about just keep spending, keep trying to buy votes. votes. That's all he's trying to do. That's what they all do. He's not trying to cut Social Security, or they're not trying to cut Social Security or Medicare or Medicaid, uh, but... All those programs are not going to be sustainable at some point. Right. They're running out of money. Because even if we got rid of, uh, the, at the rate we're spending now, at some point we're going to not be able to, to afford discretionary programs. And so it will just be down to the non-discretionary. And then pretty soon we're going to keep spending at this rate. And we won't even have the money to cover the the, uh, the mandatory programs. So yeah. We hate debt. We hate just, one other, just one other thing I can say on that, and and like I said, this is one of my biggest faults against Barack Obama, which I loved him as a president, but he not only him, but all the rest of mm-hmm. them, which I was just saying that they getting in two uh, two trillion dollars, it was for uh, you know income taxes and everything, and spending out three trillion. So right. Yeah. Right. I know that if yeah. you can, if you uh, only getting in two and spending out three, you're going to be a trillion dollars in the debt. And this is how all the presidents operate, yeah. and uh, all of the right, we, including uh, Trump. We, we need to get we need to get back to to the program that's out there. We where you know you, you submit a budget, and it, it has it goes through certain phases, and it gets ratified um, and signed off and by that's the president. Just, then you stop and at you that. Stop at that. Like and an that, actual. Budget, an actual budget, <laughs> and you don't go over that just because, unless there's an absolute. I mean, the rest emergency. of us can't live like that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, I can't Robin, run a business just based like on that. what you've told us over the years, Robin, uh, you, you are uh, you you're debt free. You live within your means. You know, you, you're not, you know, charging more on your credit cards than you make. You That's know. the trouble with politicians. They they want to buy votes, and they're they're buying it with our money. Yeah, I'm tired of it. Anyways, thanks for the uh, call. We appreciate well, thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good weekend. That was a good point. Good points. I mean, right. really. I just makes, I, I'm, I'm, makes I'm my fasc- head. I really am fascinated about what our debt is that goes to China and what the Chinese budget. I'm going to I'm going to try to find that out myself too. So we've shifted a lot of our spending away from China. They, they have done that in the past year. So that's big yeah. because we don't want to keep feeding them. Anyways, good, good morning. morning. You're on with Randy and Sherry. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I made the I made the mistake of turning on the show this morning. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> because you're talking about stuff that gets me mad while I stop listening to the show. Oh. <clears throat> Politics. Right. Well, we didn't talk about too much of it. First of all. Are you on speakerphone? Yeah. Can you? Do I need to take you off? Yeah, Please. it's real fuzzy. Okay. Thanks. All right. So what's on your mind? Did we lose her? Is she gone? Yeah. Okay. She dropped off. Call us back. Okay. Take it away, Randy. Oh. She's back. Good morning. You're on the air with Randy and Sherry. Okay. Is this better? That's a lot better. Yes, ma'am. How are you today? I'm not too bad. Okay. Good. Are you ready for the nice warm weather today? No. No? I'm like cool weather. <laughs> you like cool weather. <laughs> <laughs> Might be living in the wrong right, place. <laughs> in the wrong state. I was talking to a guy yesterday from Florida, and he goes, uh, and you're from where? And I said, middle Georgia. He goes, uh, what part? And I told him, he goes, I played baseball there one one summer, and, and uh, he goes, it's hotter than Florida up there. And I'm like, oh, yeah. It's the humidity. It's the humidity. So, anyway, what's on your mind this morning? The problem is the Republicans only pull this crap when a Democrat is in office. 
They didn't. Have, they don't attach all kinds of crap when a Republican is the president, uh, and they should not be handling the debt ceiling like they are now. That's what the problem is. I think the problem is our politics in general, and that everybody just wants to get reelected. And so they'll say and do whatever they can to try to get reelected instead of doing what's right. And we've we've swerved way away from actually doing things that make common sense in, in, in the whole picture of all of it. And that's what's frustrating to me is like spending more money than you bring in year after year after year. Where do you think that's going to get us? And they've all done it. They're all at fault. I, I Yeah, I, I think both sides do it. it just they, everyone makes a big deal over over everything, but you know it's it's good political politics to to stand up and accuse the other party of doing something and blowing yep. it out of proportion instead of coming to the table and actually having a conversation and actually right getting now, something done. Right now, you've got one side saying uh, we had way too much debt. We need to curb the debt. Let's figure out a way to do it. And the other side is going, we're not negotiating. I want to keep spending money at the rate that I'm spending. And I, even though I've already put over $5 trillion extra dollars on our debt um, since I've been in the president, um, I'm gonna, I want to keep doing that. That's basically what they're saying. And I am a fiscal conservative person. My question is, did they have these kind of conversations when the president was a Republican? I, oh, I yeah. Know. Oh, yeah, they have. They've been doing it every time. They keep, And then they would shut down the government. We've shut down the government multiple times because they can't agree because it's all partisan. It's not common sense. Nobody's following a budget. Everybody just wants what they want, and then they go in and they fight over it. And then we go through a government shutdown where we still pay everybody not to work, and then everybody gets behind. I mean, it's a disaster. It's just no one can run their household this way. We need term limits. I think that is the answer. These people are career politicians that make a fortune off of these jobs through buying stock, knowing what the laws they're going to pass, which should be illegal, is not illegal. What they do is criminal, and they're wasting our time. They're wasting our money. I'm sick of all of them. Look, back in 2002, um, three time frame, I can't remember the exact year, uh, the federal government shut down. Then it was a Republican. That was George W. Bush, and um, it was a flipped Congress. So the same thing happened then for the very same reasons, and you know debt ceiling arguments. And so was that when you were budget officer, yeah, it was. Wow. So I was I was I was in the midst of this. So yes, it, it, it. it does happen. It happens on both sides, and and you could almost <laughs> it'd be interesting to take a look at the the talking points between the in the news. Between the party, you know, of, of what happened then and what happened is depending on what on station now. you watch too. Well, yeah, I mean, just say that's a whole other thing. Pick, pick the same newspaper. They're all and rotten. Just, and just pull, <laughs> pull, just pull it up, and it, it'll probably just be just just changing the the, the names, you know, and, and the yes, parties. And exactly. It'll be almost the same talking points. So Randy was sleeping at the office back then because he had to unwind all the spending that he had planned as a budget officer for the next fiscal year, yeah. and then everybody got sent home and didn't do anything, and then they, they whatever, just stop. Okay, I'll stop. Yeah, we'll get our round <laughs> that time. But anyway, Anyways. So I, hope, I, hope that, I hope that helps you understand, you know, for, for us out here in the, in the, in the fields, we, 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 uh, we, you know, we're not in those, those big ivory columns up there in Washington, D.C. They, they don't have, they're, they're playing political politics up there. With and our not, money. With, and not our, our money, our stock market, you know, everything, because um, every time they do something stupid like this, and they didn't have to let it go this far, we talked about this three months ago that this was coming, and, and we predicted then they're going to let it come down to the 11th hour. And they're doing exactly that now. Do we think that one, one last thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the surface, I agree with the work requirements for people who are uh -huh. able-bodied and whatever. Able-bodied is the big thing. I yeah. agree. Yep. But those people, I imagine those people that are on food stamps and stuff like that, they might not even have transportation to go to a job, or they might not even be able to afford transportation to go to a job. And that's they true. They might not have a computer. They right. might not have the Internet. So, And there are extenuating circumstances in, in, in all of it. And, you know, here's here's where I, I – there, there's, there's some really broken stuff in, in, in how we, we're taking care of Americans. That's certain. But, 
You know, I drive in to Kroger, almost any Kroger I go to now, or any shopping center I go to now, and there's people standing there with signs. These are able-bodied looking Americans. They're sitting in the parking lot, and that Kroger is hiring. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Those are damn artists. I know, but they're it's and it's and it's just you know. It's disheartening. Are they're probably they're probably getting some kind of a government you know handout as well, and that just ticks me off. There's got to be some way to reform that program so that we're not rewarding the scam artists. And you know, look how much money talking about the debt ceiling. Look how much money we're paying out in this program. There's got to be some way to make the able-bodied people you know return to the workforce so that we can uh, be more productive as a as a as a as a people. Yep. Well said. But look, we're glad you called back in today. Hey, so we're glad you stumbled back onto the station. So I suggest <laughs> that you don't go to any website or news channel except for the Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal will not make you angry. It will just give you what's going on mm-hmm. in a nonpartisan fashion. It's not political, and I do not read the opinion page because that's where it can get political. Yeah, and I right. don't even look at it. So. It, you can just go to WSJ.com, but literally that's the first thing I read in the morning, and it never makes me mad. Okay. And, and right? really, never. It might be therapeutic. <laughs> <laughs> that and pray. Pray a lot for this country, okay? All right. All right? Call Thank back you. in. You had good questions. Awesome. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. All, right. All right. Let's see here. <sighs> well, AI, you're there, right? Uh, no, I'm on the phone. <laughs> Good morning. You're on with Randy and Sherry. What's going on? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm pretty good. Uh, first of all, I just want to say I think it's the Democrats holding up the debt ceiling talks. Since the last two people said they thought the Republicans did it. <laughs> <laughs> but also on the uh, the 14th Amendment uh-huh. about the debt, Yeah. there's a section four, and it talks about you know the validity of the public debt authorized by law, so on and so on. Okay, good. But it talks about incurred, it's it's because of the Civil War, evidently. Hmm. And it's talking about uh, because of insurrection, a rebellion against the United States, so forth, and any claim for the loss or emancipation of any slaves. Yeah, I had read in there about paying the, the debt incurred, and they were not allowing that in that, but I, the, I didn't extrapolate that to our current situation. Yeah, I don't. I'm like you. I don't see how they can do that, but you know, the government can do anything. <laughs> and uh, right. And I'm like you too. That I think they need to get back. You know, they have, they don't ever ratify the budget before the fiscal year starts. Right. It's covered by the budget. That's right. I mean, that's the first thing they ought to do. I think, like you said, and a balanced budget would. Solve the debt ceiling problem. Right. We That's might right. need it every now and then, but we wouldn't need it as often. I'd like to know how many man hours they're wasting and how much money we're wasting on these politicians that sit around trying to get on TV, making their argument and trying to make their case to be popular, to get reelected or whatever. I think it's just a show. Yeah, well, I've heard they only work in their office like three days a week, and I guess they meet people and stuff. And, uh, you know, if you, know, if you figure it on a Twenty, uh, forty-hour week is like. I mean, if you can twenty-four hours a day, it comes to about forty dollars an hour over the course of the year. Well, you know, it, it's a, there's a lot of breakfast, lunch, yep. and uh, uh, brunch and lunch and dinner you know, meetings. So it takes it takes your time. It takes a lot of time to do that. <laughs> well, I appreciate your show. I really enjoy it. I don't always get listened to it, but. Uh, I really do appreciate it. I enjoy it. Well, thanks thank for your thoughts on that 14th Amendment because I was a little confused there myself. Great. Thank you, and have All a great right. weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Let's talk about some AI real quick, uh, something non-politic. There you well, go. Well, actually, it has politics in here. I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. Will Will AI help us or leave us behind is the, uh, the, the thoughts behind this, this article. This from the Wall Street Journal. Journal, too. Technology revolution usually starts with a little fanfare, a fanfare. No one woke up in the morning in 1760 and shouted, Oh my God, the Industrial Revolution has just begun. Even the Digital Revolution chugged away for many years in the background with hobbyists cobbling together personal computers to show off at a geeky gathering such as the Homebrew Computer Club before people noticed that the world was beginning 
uh, was being fundamentally transformed. Artificial intelligence revolution is different. Within a few weeks in the spring of 2023, millions of tech-aware people and then ordinary folks noticed that a transformation was happening with head snapping speed that would change the nature of work, learning, and creativity and the task of daily life. It is inevitable that machines will become super intelligent on their own. The advent of chat box and other forms of gener- generative AI, computers that can generate original text or images by training themselves on enormous sets of data, raises a question that has been central in the history of artificial intelligence. Should our goal to be to make humans and machines uh, type partners uh, so that they may make progress uh, or by working in symbiosis? Or is it inevitable that machines will become super intelligent on their own, eventually leaving us mere mortals behind. One of the most influential papers in the history of modern technology titled Man-Computer Symbiosis was published in 1960. The hope is that in not too many years, human brains and computing machines will be coupled together very tightly and that the resulting partnership will think as no human brain has ever thought and process data in a way not approached by the information handling machines we know today. Right. MIT students turned some of the early computers into video games with joysticks and pointers. Other advancements in connecting machines and humans quickly followed, such as the point-and-click mouse and the graphic user interface that we now use on our personal computers. At the last meeting uh, at Apple in 2011, Steve Jobs got to see and test Siri, which was an example of the next great advance, the ability to use voice and interact with our machines. Elon Musk is now... Uh, pursuing what would be the ultimate step in human machine mind melding a microchip with neurosensors that can be implemented into the brain implanted implanted into the brain and and allow almost instant sharing of information and signals between us and our computers this month this company Neuralink completed a final round of animal studies and prepared an application to the Food and Drug Administration (laughs) to allow chips to be implanted into the brains of human test subjects the, the best way to make sure that the AI does not turn against us or destroy human humanity is to tightly connect with it uh, to human agencies, he says. So who is doing what with AI? And this is a summary of an article from Bloomberg. Google unveiled an experimental, experimental way to search the Internet that gives more conversational results and said its artificial intelligence chatbot, BARD, is now available for much of the world to use online. As part of a suite of AI announcements at its conference last week, the company also announced a new large language model called Palm 2 that developers can use to train tools like chatbots. Google said it was already, uh, had already woven the update into many of its marquee products, including Gmail and Bard. So what is a chatbot? A chatbot is a self-service resource that can give customers information and solutions they need pretty quickly. People want quality, speed, efficiency, and experience higher than ever. It can reduce user wait time for the immediate response instead of waiting for an email or a phone response. You've probably already done a live chat with a customer service bot. We've been using them for a long time. In the early years, they were very frustrating. Now they are pretty seamless and extremely polite. You even feel a little silly when you get angry when the bot doesn't answer or doesn't understand exactly what you're saying. Bear with it. It's only going to get better. So what are the main companies creating this infrastructure? Alphabet, Google, Microsoft, OpenAI. Each company has a name for their products that does a specific function. Function like the following example. So I have noticed this change just in the last two, week, uh, two weeks when I go and do a search online. Generative AI is coming to Google's flagship product, the new search offering, which Google is calling Search Generative Experience, or SGE for short, displays an AI-produced response at a, the top of results, which seeks to answer a user's query while summarizing key information and linking it to website sources. So I'm searching things all the time because somebody will tell me something right. I don't completely understand. I read an article and I want to know more about a certain word or whatever, and I type in my search, and that's exactly what pops up in the top of Google now right. is summaries of what you want to know. But then you can also scroll down and you can go to links to websites that give you further. But if you just want a quick answer, this is already there. It's already on Google. Right. You know, and I'm going to have to change. You're going to have to change your name because I keep saying, "Hey, Sherry." And my phone answers is Siri. So, I mean, I'm not going to get them to change Siri's names. Okay. <laughs> anyway, if someone is using the new search feature to figure out where the, where the 
best go on a family vacation, for example, they could type in, what better, what's better for my family with three kids and a dog, Bryce Canyon or Arches Natural, National Park, into Google search bar. Google then makes a summary using AI. In a demonstration, Google showed how this system pulled from sources around the web to describe how both Bryce Canyon and Arches National Park are family-friendly, though Bryce Canyon has hiking trails that allows dogs. Important. And very important. On the right-hand carousel, uh, beside the description, Google lists the websites where AI drew the information from. Like, though unlike Microsoft being, it does, doesn't footnote sources. The company said that one, situa- one situation it thinks generative AI can handle particularly well is assisting people who want to use Google to search what they can buy online. Google also announced a new filter called Perspectives, which aims to show users long and short form videos and other forum posts describing the experiences of people from around the web. The company's bid to appeal to a younger user base and counter the massive popularity of TikTok. Reed said the Perspectives filter would pull in videos from YouTube and feature social media influencers, though not every search query will trigger Perspectives. Google is launching Perspectives first for topics like shopping, travel, and how-to advice, but the filter won't be triggered for sensitive issues like health, finance, or politics. Google has woven generative AI into its popular workspace productivity suite, letting users tap into the technology as they work on files in Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides. And I cut this article way down. It was massive, and it was just way overwhelming to me. For example, users can ask the AI system to generate a thank you letter for a job interview or request a glowing review from a team member. These programs can also be trained on coding language and mathematical data, helping it fare better with logic, math, and word problems. So... I guess you don't have to go to school anymore to study. You can just take your test and put the questions in Google, and it'll give you the answers, which is why they're going to have to make kids start doing more stuff in the classroom without access to a computer to actually learn something. Uh, or is there going to have to become a hybrid you know, school where there's certain things you have to know by memorization, and the rest of it you're just going to be able to see how good of a person or how good at searching stuff on the Internet right. you are. You know? Anyway. Um, there was a great article. It's called "Help: My Political Beliefs Were Altered by a Chat Box." Uh, and uh, the let's see here. This is one AI assistant uh, may be able to help change our views without us realizing. It says one expert. When we ask Chat GPT or another bot to draft a memo or email or a presentation, we think these artificial intelligent assistants are doing our bidding. A growing body of research shows that they can also change our thinking without our knowing. Is that a bad thing? Is it because the chat box is providing unbiased information from across a wide spectrum of data found on the Internet, or is some radical-leaning person leaning on the chat bot? So I don't know. I doubt the latter. Uh, one of the, the latest studies in this vein from research spread across the globe found that when subjects were asked to use the AI to help them write an essay, that AI could nudge them to write an essay. Let's see. That AI could nudge them to write an essay either for or against a particular view, depending on the basis of the algorithm. Bias. Bias of the algorithm. Performing uh, this exercise also measurably influenced the subject's opinion on the topic after the exercise. You may not even know what you're being influenced, uh, that you're being influenced, uh, says uh, Moore Noman, a professor of information science at Cornell University and the senior author of the paper. He said uh, he calls this phenomenon latent persuasion. These studies raise an alarming prospect that, as AI makes us more productive, it may also alter our opinions in subtle and unanticipated ways. This influence may make uh, more akin to the way humans sway others through collaboration and social norms than the kind of mass media and social influence we are familiar with. Researchers who have uncovered this phenomenon believe that the best defense against this new form of psychological influence is making more people aware of it. In the long run, other defenses such as regulators mandating transparency about how how AI algorithms work and what human biases they mimic may be helpful. All of this could lead to a future in which people choose which AI they use at work at home, in the office, and in the education of their children based on which human values are expressed in the responses the AI gives. This is a nightmare, but have we not been subjected to a world where people we don't know try to influence us through simple comments? People tend to want you to believe what they believe, and this is no different other than it is a machine. That's right. So I think the big thing here is, you know, they just want us to be aware. Yes. They want us to be careful. And, 
you know. But don't believe it just because it prints. Just because it brings up something, if it's an opinion, don't believe it. But the Do real your own co- research. But the real cool thing here too is they have so many types of uh, different chat. You know, it, you can have like a, if you're a member of the GOP politicals, uh, you can be chat uh, GOP. GPT, progressive GPT. Uh, there's, so you can choose and custom tailor your chat uh, GPT to whatever you want it to be. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, guys, it's been fun being with you today. Uh, thanks for listening to Your Money, produced by Rosenberg Financial Group. And thanks for the callers. Uh, even though you uh, didn't like talking about politics, we do appreciate your phone call back today and welcome back to the show. As a financial advisor, the main things that we do is provide retirement planning advice and manage our clients' investment accounts. And if you're looking for a financial advisor, please contact our office to set up a complimentary consultation. Our office number is 478-922-8100. And you can learn more about us by visiting our website, retirerelax.com. If you have questions or topics about um, anything that you'd like us to t- talk about on our weekly radio broadcast, please email me at randy at rfmoney.com. And we look forward to connecting with you next week. We hope you have a great weekend, everyone. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Royal Alliance Associates Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC. Royal Alliance Associates Incorporated is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names, products or services referenced here are independent of Royal Alliance Associates Incorporated. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of Royal Alliance Associates Incorporated. Investing is subject to risk, including loss of principal invested. No strategy can assure a profit against loss. Rosenberg Financial Group is located at 2517 Moody Road, Warner Robins, Georgia, 31. and can be reached at 478-922-8100.